moved by Christine. Rich will be late. He took a fall on the ice yesterday and has hurt his shoulder, so he will be second. Hopefully, the uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Walter, we have your inquiry. Yeah. I, this has been given to Bob, and we will uh, follow through on your questions. Thank you very so much. World War Fire Company. <clears throat> Joe Booth, you please. You're number one on the agenda. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Construction renovation uh, improvement costs of $1.4 million in the town. Uh, most of that improvement is occurring at Slocum Dixon and what is the old Elks Club. Um, three hold, homes are tempor temporarily on hold. Um, they're awaiting approval from the um, water quality and water pollution control so that a sewer permit can be issued as a part of that DC consent order. Um, as you know, our office handles all types of calls, ranging in depth from, from in-depth build, building code questions, to zoning requests, to housing um, and zoning complaints, to name a few. To date, our office handled almost 400 calls. Uh, we're also conducting our fire prevention inspections, which started in January. Uh, to date, we've conducted 80 such inspections. 62% of which have needed uh, a reinspection, and 25% of those have required a third reinspection or a third inspection. As a uh, point of future reference and discussion, in order to comply with the Department of State requirements, this 80 number will increase by 450 within the coming year. Um, They'll be bringing us into multiple dwellings. And as such, I've taken upon myself to order um, picture IDs for uh, Tom and myself, um, especially since we're going into these dwellings. People want to know who we are and where we're from. We're not always near the car. Um, with the impending and proposed zoning text amendments that uh, the town is, is looking at uh, uh, implementing, uh, I'd, I'd like to ask the town board to form uh, an advisory board for these zoning text amendments. Um, perhaps a citizen's advisory committee. Um, uh, with the staff at the uh, Sanger building has been meeting on a regular basis. Um, maybe from Jerry Green's uh, constant uh, talk about better communication within uh, within the town. Uh, it uh, uh, prompted Roger Cleveland to get us all together and we're having some very productive meetings. Uh, instead of working in a vacuum, uh, we're all keeping each other abreast of uh, things going on in the town. Uh, so kudos to uh, Roger Cleveland for starting this, uh, these meetings. Um, the guy I've handed out is uh, one product of those meetings. Um, took a while to formulate. Uh, it's a guide for explaining the process of getting a building permit for a one or two family dwelling. Um, lastly, um, I'd ask the town, to, the town board to consider making a resolution to um, use the town parks or highway departments to secure a home at 7 Marks Place. Um, the last owner of record is Natalie Fesha. Um, I don't know if this resolution can be open-ended for future needs, but the house has been a, a problem.
problematic house in the past. Uh, most recently, I was called there by the police department because the doors were wide open. Um, the contents of the house are strewn all over and uh, it needs to be secured immediately. Uh, they were notified in a registered letter, a registered letter on February 13th, but uh, so far there's been no response. Can't we just do it and then put a lien against the property? I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you, uh, there was a registered letter sent. Did they receive the letter? Did they sign for it? No. I wonder if we shouldn't run this by Jerry first and, and uh, just. Um, we can do that. I don't know if this can wait to the next board meeting. Is anybody living there? It doesn't appear so. It's rat infested. It's, um, it's a mess. We're just starting the letter time. The only address we had is Seven Marks Place. Now, in the past, that has worked. And I don't know if it was an elderly person that was in the nursing home or whatever, but I assume the mail got forwarded to the proper people. Sure. Yeah. You're probably following the um, in our code book, uh, where the MCA buildings. I think what he's doing, he's following the steps that are, yes. that are in there. It's mm -hmm. uh, Chapter 94, property maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a, I have a standard resolution um, that goes along with that. You're convinced that you've exhausted every attempt to contact a responsible party? Or? The house has been open since at least February 13th. It's okay. not a good situation. Um, I have no other means of contacting anybody else other than going by the address of record. As I say, it's a problematic property. That's how I've gotten action before. Um, the situation... And you're asking just to secure the front door? That's actually the rear door, yes. Um, and what, what, what happens after that? I mean, what, to, what's the next step? Where the door secured, and then we monitor the property for maintenance issues. Okay, do we do, we do any kind of public, um, publish anything? Yes. It's, 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 well, the, a notice is placed on the door. A notice is placed at the clerk's office, county clerk's office, and so eventually... We, we would be posting the bill. To, yes. Have they paid their taxes in January? I believe so. I don't know for sure. So do we have... We have to do a resolution. Can we, we do a resolution. Really do we have the language mm -hmm. for us? What, what's basically this language here? Yeah. Well, we recite um, the conditions that Joe described uh, and refer to Chapter 96, 94, 94. 94 of the, the Unsafe Building Code, and um, and including his attempt to notify the people, right. and even the fact that they haven't signed for it, um, and that the town board authorizes either the Parks Department or the Highway Department to secure the building. Um, at no cost to the town, and any charges that might be incurred would be levied right. against the particular right. parcel. Okay. And not that it makes a big difference, but have we received complaints on the parcel? Only from the police department, who I believe received it, okay. was alerted okay. to the property. Okay. 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 That's that's the wording of the motion. I think we've definitely got to secure it. So, if someone would I'll move it. I'll move, move it. Okay. I've moved it. I'll second. Second by Dave. All in favor? All right. Thank you, Joe. In any event, uh, if you can review this guide for building permits, and um, if I, I guess if I don't hear back from you individually, uh, I will be posting this on the internet through Jeff Madden. Good. I will do it. Okay. Uh, Joe, should, oh, I just had just a question. Uh, just to refresh my memory on the commercial fire inspection. The cost you mentioned a couple times you have to or several times you're moving back two three times. Mm. Um, how how do we how are, are we reimbursed the cost? Is there is there a fee that we charge those folks? The fees are dated. They were not changed in our initial building permit fee schedule change, so they're dated. There's really not a reinspection fee assigned to the fire prevention program. It's all something we're taking into uh, account when we. Uh, uh, we write Would you code update those? Okay. For these additional inspections. And then, secondly, you you mentioned the 17 permits issues. That that 2,000 
It's seven from January first of this year. Okay. Oh, from January first of this year. So yes. the first month or almost two months, and then four hundred calls in that time, the same time period. Okay. Thank you. In addition to what Bob said, we're going to go from about eighty to about four hundred and fifty. Fire inspections. No, but four, actually the 450 is added on to the 80. Okay, all right. And because a great deal of these, or all of them probably, are first time inspections. Of the 450, yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's very likely that we're going to find issues that uh, you know, are, are a big surprise to the it, to it's, the it's very likely that this can be a controversial program at least the first three years because some of these houses are, are going to be on a three-year schedule. And just to give an example, houses that might be on the tax records as two families are now been made into four families uh, without permits and without zoning approval. So, and it's an issue that all municipalities are going to deal with. It's next quote with the state law. Okay. Um, going back two and three times, we touched on this. I really think we should be, maybe not the second time, but the third time you have to go back on the same issue, I think we should look at a, a some inspection. sort of a charge, inspection charge fee. Yeah. And the <coughs> text amendment uh, board, advisory board, or citizens board, uh, how would we proceed on that? I would, uh, I guess the board, does the board have to make a resolution on that to advertise yeah. for um, a committee? Yeah. Either there's a consensus, um, but to form the committee, they need a board resolution. How long would you go? How long would this uh, zone text amendment be in, in under study, would you guess? We have a good grip of what needs to be changed, and these are laws that are omitted. Uh, an outdated sign ordinance that's causing more problems than it's worth. Uh, uh, glitches in the original code. Um, things of that nature. So we have a good handle on what needs to be changed. Fences. However, there's issues like fences and uh, uses of property that are more geared towards citizen opinion that we need we need some input from, from citizens from the town. Our representative Can we move that tonight? Well, you know, I I'd like to I don't know unless we we can move it tonight, but um, I'd like to get a little more information regarding what the, the real goal is. And you, you know, if you could lay that out, um, is it something you, you would want to move on immediately, or is it something that we the could? Forming of the yeah, zoning is it something that we could? Uh, I don't see any problem with forming the zoning committee. Um, they'll be well briefed as to what they need to look at and their functional be. Um, so much of the zone is, is already covered under statute. Oh, yes. there, are, there are a half a dozen gray areas or interpretation. Well, that's, well that's, there's, I'll give you an example, another example. In a, a PD residential use, there's no setbacks listed. So if somebody wants to come in and put a shed up, we have no idea how to direct them as to how far from the property line they should put a shed. Um, Planned highway business. There's a ton of houses in the planned highway business district. However, they're technically legal non-conforming uses. They can't be added on to. They, they're, they're, according to the zone, they're not even supposed to be there. So it's creating a lot of problems when people want to renovate or add on into that zone. So things like that have to be addressed in the, in the zoning. And, and this. If you remember, we had a proposal from Peter J. Smith to redo the zoning, and I think the price was over $100,000. And, and Kurt and I got together and said, we know what needs to be done. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Let's use our current zoning law and amend it. And that's what we're going We had to wait for the comprehensive plan to be complete, um, and that is complete now. Is, is this, would this be done in conjunction with the zoning board? She says, the zoning board certainly could have a representative from the zoning board. Sure, certainly should be on the matter. Okay. Right. I'm comfortable with that. I'll move that one. I just want that pragmatic people. We want to act like we're the, you know, I mean, like you said, you've got things that have happened in years past. I think we need some good common sense. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So that we're not going to be punitive to people. No, no, no. 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 Uh, right now, we are punitive because of our lack of designations in these homes, and these are punitive actions. This will make it more fair across the board. So we basically. Well, that's been a crazy one. You can draw my members, or what would you like? I mean, five or five. Uh, uh, I, I think five would be a good number. One being from the one zoning, zoning board. board. I, I, and I, even if you want to pull one from the planning board. Um, and, and three, three, and three and citizens. Three citizens. citizens. All right, so that's good. I think we have, you made a motion, I'll second it. Great idea. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, I have one more question, Joe. Oh, yeah. you know, um, these fire inspections, mm -hmm. um, do you give the, do you tell people you're coming ahead of time? Or? Right now, uh, <laughs> Dory schedules each and every one of those. And we're trying to do about four a day. So they're told in advance. They're not surprise visits. They, that's a little bit of the upsetting part. If we go into a restaurant and they know we're coming, not to see the fire suppression system certified and inspected, it's really no excuse for that. They've had two weeks' notice. Right. Okay. Good question. Good question. Well, you mentioned about the IDs, and I didn't know if you were just coming, knocking on the door and saying, here we are. Well, you know? the thing is, with these multiple dwellings, like use hillside patterns, for example, there's 20, 30 units in there. The landlord will be notified. It'll be incumbent upon him to notify the residents. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Real good job. Thank you. Roger. such as access, security, and so forth as the Mohawk Valley Water Authority. However, they also wanted to make note of the capacity of the city's storm system and <clears throat> wanted assurance that uh, whatever discharge came out of these uh, southern reservoirs from, from the facilities did not overburden the carrying capacity of the city system. Uh, <clears throat> those issues, in addition to some other ones, will be addressed by uh, Joanne and her right up uh, both to our group and to the Mohawk Valley Water Authority. And the Tilden Ave Stormwater Project, uh, Joanne has met with Mr. Peterson and reviewed an improvement plan that could be installed on his property. Uh, he was not really in favor of it as it uh, was substantial in size and assumed the absence of any upstream stormwater control, which we are not really assuming at this point in time. Uh, I'm going to speak with the, the upstream property owner and ascertain what their plans are for future development of the property. In Woodbury and Beechwood, the town board accepted the recommendations of the stormwater group and accepted the fee proposal from Shoemaker to investigate the mitigation, mitigation options, which shall also include uh, maintenance considerations. As regards Oxford and Kellogg Road, the board accepted the recommendation of the stormwater group and accepted the fee proposal from a faro to perform an appraisal. Uh, the landowner has agreed to fund half the cost of that appraisal, and that work should uh, now be in progress and hopefully ready for reporting at the next uh, meeting. Uh, <clears throat> we are planning to send out a request for proposals to include recommendation on maintenance and grouping of projects to uh, hopefully <clears throat> get some uh, uh, reduction in recommendations on reduction in cost uh, due to the uh, grouping of, of uh, projects. Uh, the drainage district, the staff has completed a listing of districts and has continued its, in, its investigations of the kinds, types, and frequency of maintenance that are required. 
One issue that did come up was the uh, detention basins. Uh, there's a number of detention basins around the town, and some of them have a tax map number. And they have a tax map number because uh, they were listed uh, <coughs> by the developer of the property. And as the developer of the property had completed the subdivision, uh, <coughs> they're long gone, and uh, the town never took over the basins formally. So eventually they transfer over to the county, and the county puts them up for auction. And I know in, uh, in Pippinwood, uh, we had a situation a number of years ago. I received a phone call one morning from somebody wanting to know about getting a building permit. And so he gave me the tax map parcel number, and I looked it up, and it was a, one of our detention basins. So we're trying to go through right now and take a look at all of these detention basins, see which ones are covered by easements, which ones aren't, and then uh, give the board a, a, a report on those and see if we can come up with some policy where we actually know which belongs to us, which doesn't, which ones we need to address, and what we're going to do in the future with other subdivisions. Uh, fortunately, the, in, the individual that called us most recently had uh, reputedly acquired a detention basin up behind Morgan Lane and was actually going to do uh, <clears throat> use it for a dump for our country. And they, they call their office and uh, I can't remember the exact reason, but that's how we found out about it. And obviously we don't want country being dumped into our detention basin. So uh, <clears throat> that's another matter that we're working on. Uh, at our next meeting, we'll also deal with the term limits, and we're looking at uh, probably the first week of April for our next meeting. Good. Uh, second issue is on Mallard Brook. I know several months ago, uh, this board had approved a, uh, basically a driveway permit uh, to cross lands uh, budding uh, Mallard Brook Lane. Uh, in the process of, of going through the uh, the administrative end of things. Uh, <clears throat> this land uh, supposedly had been given to the town sometime during the, I'll say, the early 90s. And we found out that that actually hadn't, hadn't happened. So we are going through the process with the town attorney right now. The developer is still willing to give the town the land. It's not an issue. But we're just going through the administrative uh, actions that we need to acquire <coughs> the property. Uh, <clears throat> last thing I wanted to just uh, brief the board on is that you may see more of our uh, sand-salt mixture on the road. We're almost out of salt. Uh, so is the state. Uh, statewide, we're almost out of salt. Uh, I was told today that uh, Cargill, who was the state contractor for supplying salt, is now limiting the state statewide to 4,000 tons a day. Uh, they just don't have enough salt. Uh, apparently they started off a little bit short in the beginning of the year. And, uh, I've talked with the county about getting salt from them, and <clears throat> they're just about out. The state's just about out. So we have uh, enough sand salt next year that uh, we may have to start using more of that on our, our road. So if you see it out there, it's not because we're you know, trying to get rid of it. It's there because uh, we can't get any more salt. Thank you. So. Good bit of information. So. Thank you, Roger. Uh, just, uh, you got something else? No. The uh, uh, Oneida County Sewer District Sewer Abatement and Permit Compliance Project Steering Committee <coughs> meeting. Yes? If, you know, what, you know yep. what I'm saying? Uh, in it, it references, uh, it basically says that the county is not going to uh, address which projects should be given a green light and which shouldn't. It's going to be a planning board issue, and therefore the planning board needs to be well versed on the uh, II projects and, and be right on top of it. Are they copied on this stuff? Do you know? It's not fair, perhaps, to ask you, but I, I just want to make sure our planning board, they're the ones that are going to be uh, I know, key I know in this whole operation. Not necessarily, uh, not, not the county, it's going to be our planning board. Well, our, right, our planning board is going to set. Uh, <coughs> What the approach has, has been talked about 
is that if a developer comes in for a, let's say, a 100 lot subdivision, that maybe what the planning board does is break that on, down into much smaller phases, stages, uh, where maybe 20 lots are approved. Instead of trying to reserve enough of these credits or offset credits for the entire 100, what we need to do is look at the, a, a smaller number and then try to make sure that within some set period of time that those lots are actually developed. Okay, how, how is that time. communicated to the planning board? Uh, <clears throat> that will be sent probably by the planning board uh, directly to, but there hasn't been a protocol that's really been set up at this point in time. Okay, but that should be coming yes. right along because yes. any project that is pending Correct. currently is going to fall under this. Yep. Well, any project, any project within the the that right. flows sewage to the sewage okay. right. 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 Yep. which is most of what we're dealing with, or a lot of what we're dealing yeah. with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to wondered if you knew what the planning board was up to date on. Uh, I have had conversations with the planning board chairman on this, and he's, he's aware of, what, of what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Mike? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, well, I have uh, two items on the agenda. Uh, first is I'd like to request permission to advertise. Uh, Gail's put together an uh, advertising for me for the OD or an RFP for the Town of New Hartford Recreation Center energy proposal for replacing the current light system. Uh, I've met with Jerry Green. I've uh, gone over this with Gail. I also had the opportunity to go and meet with a gentleman that came around the departments to review our purchasing policies. The board is hired the firm. So I took the opportunity to go over this RFP as an uh, advertisement with him and cleared all the hurdles that this is a proper way. As a matter of fact, uh, in reviewing the town's purchasing manual, uh, which I had misplaced for a couple of years, I guess. Um, it was right at the main ones that we did that, that RFPs uh, to work as a bid spec. So, same fashion as a bid spec, I have the uh, RFP document ready to, to give Gail tomorrow, several copies, and we'll advertise, and hopefully the direct center project underway. Good. Good. I need a resolution on that, though. Okay. I'll move that. Moved by Bob. Second by Christine. All in favor? Yes, All right. Yeah. Thank you. For your review, I have, uh, I'd like to go with the state contract for the uh, dump truck in the park. Um, after reviewing the state uh, contracts on various dump trucks, uh, the uh, item 24 of the 2008 uh, New York State Vehicle Contracts covers what we're looking for. Um, so I would like permission to go and order uh, the new truck for the park through Van Portal Ford. Um, the the uh, max of the price quote is thirty-seven thousand four forty-one. Okay. Uh, so I'd like the permission to spend thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Just make sure I include any additional delivery expenses. We do have uh, thirty-nine thousand uh, in the uh, recently approved van for the uh, park capital projects, which I believe uh, has cleared the 20 day waiting period. And so there we go. Moved by Dave. Second. Second by Bob. All in favor? Aye. Uh, third, I just wanted to comment on the, uh, with the snowfall, uh, the pushing Clint tractor they had, they deliver within 45 days, time period for the uh, skid steer. I hope to have it by Friday, which will be about 34 days delivery time. Uh, the bean plow is up there. The dough, we're just waiting for the skids here to come in on the truck. And as soon as we get it, we'll be out there starting to do some test runs and yeah. on the uh, main drives. So in case you get any inquiries as to why we're not out there yet, we're just waiting on the equipment for it. And we're still within the window of delivery. So. And you, you have a plan, at least in the back of your mind, that uh, in the spring we're going to hit the main drags and clean up? Yeah, yeah, I have a plan for the sweeper, uh, trying to work with the county. The Earl suggested working with the county. Um, but we're going to work uh, Chapman Road, um, the part, part of Genesee Street that's the town, that's not the village, and the commercial town. 
And I saw when they worked together, the state yeah. and everybody, and they would do the roads too. And, yeah. But I figured we may have some inquiries, and we're also, you know, we're doing some planning to, to try, try to come up with some other mechanisms for future maintenance. So. Mm -hmm. And everybody else, we're working on our summer flyer. It's just about complete. We will be, uh, we price quoted at various firms for our mailers. Of, you know, Tom Cryer, PJ Green was by far the lowest bidder. And that will be uh, our summer informational piece will come out in the April issue of the Town Crier as a wraparound and will be on the website. If you have any inquiries about our summer programs. That's good. Other than that, any questions for you know, the Parks Department? No. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, I'll your next time. Um, gentlemen and lady, um, as you are aware, um, Mr. Young got on, had decided to um, a letter from John Ayer, who represents a gentleman, who has now decided that knowing that I was going to notify 570 people in all the PhD districts, he might have a better feel uh, or that to support his request to have the gasoline stations to convene the store in the PHP district. So now he's turned around and he asked that we schedule a public hearing, possibly sometime in April. Um, but so I, I would rather not have a resolution on this just yet because um, the library had been booked in Oxford Road School and Miles Elementary were booked in March. So I'm trying to determine whether the library, uh, the Miles Elementary will be booked on Wednesday straight through June. Um, I'll have for the next board meeting um, a location and then we'll schedule it then. Keep in mind now in the month of April there, there's a week there where all the schools are closed. Yeah. Or is it the third week in April? So. Yeah. I think we'll probably look at like maybe April 9th, our first okay. meeting. All right. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, um, Okay, Dwayne Farr had been notified um, that he was reappointed to the Board of Assessment Review and um, didn't take his oath of office within the required 30 days of received notification, so the position becomes vacant. <clears throat> I did talk to him, he apologized for overlooking it, would like to be reappointed. Okay. So, that needs to be done. All right. Thank you, okay. Moved by Christine. Second by Bob, all in favor? Aye. And likewise with Alice D'Elia on the Mohawk Valley Water Authority. Missed the 30 day time frame, the position is vacant. Yes, he would like to be reappointed and take the oath within the required time. I move that. I'll second. Moved by Bob, second by Christine, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And. The Zoning Board of Appeals, Randy uh, Bogart, the Chairman, and members Timothy Tallman, Robert Schulman, and Senior Engineering Technician John Meager are requesting permission to attend a training training program on planning and zoning on March 5th in the town of Schuyler with uh, incidental um, registration costs to be borne by the town. Moved. Second. Moved. Second by Christine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Gail, do you also want to do the appointment to the Lowell Valley Regional yes. Water Authority? Yes, that. yeah. Um, that's on the Finance Committee, and they'll be meeting March 6th. Um, and the gentleman's name is Robert Sebastian. This is the gentleman that uh, Whitesboro had it for, what, the last two years? Um, it's our turn to appoint a, some. Yeah, there was a woman serving from Whitestown, <clears throat> yes. Bob Sebastian, had served as New Hartford's representative right. about six years ago. So, so it's our turn this so year, and he's right. eager to do it. So, the motion for approval. Move. 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 Uh, second. Move. Second. Move. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. That's it. All right. Uh, I don't know if there are any, any reports here. Uh, that went out. Uh, uh, Talking about the market business, but I'm not done with that. Uh, we do have a we need a motion for approval of item of bills. I'll move. Second. Second. Second by David. All in favor? Aye. And uh, what I should, you know, with the New Hartford Business Park, um, since we're not really sure when we're going to be ready to make a resolution on it, we just should we just table it? Yes. Yes. 
Correct. Our next meeting is in March, and I believe it's the 10th? The 12th. And that might be a, a, a different location. No, that will be at this That'll location. Be it's the April one. Okay. All right. Uh, I have nothing else, anything else to do with the table. Uh, Christine? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Move for adjournment. Second. Mm -hmm. Christine, please. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you.